You're listening to The Real Well Show with Kathy Fetke, the real estate investor's resource. You've heard of options, lease options, options to buy, but how do you negotiate that and what is it? I'm Kathy Fetke and welcome to The Real Well Show. Today, I've invited my partner 14 years, Fred Bates. We have done 14 syndications together, building homes all over the country in Florida, Montana, Nevada, California, and in Oregon. And uh, we have another project in Oregon that we did a, an option on, and it's very, very creative structuring. So I wanted to talk about how Fred negotiated that. He is a master negotiator. Uh, I wouldn't want to be on the other side of the table with him. I'm glad I'm on the same side as him. This is a new project, and we are still accepting investment on it. Uh, there's a 12.5% preferred return, and uh, we expect to begin distributions at the end of the year. So it's a very exciting project. We've really reduced the, a lot of the risk due to this lease option. So I wanted to just kind of explain how that works, how Fred did it, how you can do it on your projects, or how you can be involved in ours. So, Fred, welcome back to the Real Wealth Show. Morning, Kathy. Good to be here. I'm having you back today to talk about negotiations, and I know there's opportunity out there today, and maybe people want to learn new ways of negotiating to um, to be able to get into a deal. So, we are doing a project together right now that you've said is is one of your favorites over the past forty plus years that you've been developing. What, why is that? Well, I think that it has to do with the way we negotiate it, the way we put this together, where it doesn't require, as you know, um, in this particular case, we're buying over ten million dollars worth of land. But what we do is we have an option on it, and we're taking it down in bits and pieces. As we build, after we build a house, we build the house on their property and we close on the land when we sell it to a third party buyer. So we have an option uh, with to purchase the lots over a five year period, but not until such time as we have a third party buyer in place. Yeah, so this is this is kind of over the 14 years that we've been working together, we've done several type deals like this where you've negotiated similar similar deals. Um, how do you get the seller to agree to something like this, not taking the cash right up front? Um, well, it was a relatively sophisticated deal. As he knows, these were finished lots, of course, and they're very expensive. Um, so it was going to require somebody to come up with a lot of cash at any one time and then more cash to build it out. Um, so he had the um, forethought and the wherewithal to accept something like this. A lot of sellers couldn't accept something like this. A lot of them wouldn't have been able to um, uh, fathom what we were talking about. But in this particular case, uh, um, he and uh, his attorney were able to see the value in this. And uh, um, it's going to work out great for both of us. It, it's maybe the best deal we've ever negotiated. I mean, give us us five years to take down 155, 56 finished lots. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, now, a lot of investors are licking their wounds today. A lot of syndications have blown up specifically in multifamily and commercial where uh, they weren't, they just simply weren't expecting rates to go up so quickly. And now, um, you know, the overnight lending rate is higher than uh, you know, the cap rates in a lot of cases, and it's really hard to make those numbers work. Um, why did you not do any multifamily deals in the last few few years? I have to say we looked at them, and it's not just in the last few years. We've been looking at them for some time, and it's hard to make them pencil. It requires so much equity, and of course, um, debt service going up makes it next to impossible. It was hard before. It's next to impossible today. So, um, it's the amount of capital you need, the amount of time you have to hold that investment before you even get a cash flow, um, and then uh, being able to find good financing today is next to impossible. So, um, yeah, it just didn't work for us. And you're you're underwriting it very conservatively. I mean, were you looking at these deals as if you would, you know, renovate and you know improve the value? Um, he didn't look at any deals like that. All of the deals were 
all the apartment deals we were looking at was buying land at very affordable prices. We were getting good prices on the land and we still couldn't make them pencil. So it, it just tells you that construction costs are high in comparison to what rents. I mean, I know everybody thinks rents are going up and that's great, but our construction costs are very high. And then now bank financing costs are high. And like I said, the amount of capital you have to have in it is very intense. So it's almost 50% or better sometimes. The, the uh, apartment loans are anywhere from 60, 40 to 60%. So you need 40 to 60% of cash capital in that project. Yeah, which is why people got in trouble. They got the bridge loans that, um, you know, adjusted and they are, it's just too too expensive to make numbers work. It's amazing that so many new multifamily uh, projects are coming online. I know a lot got stalled, but still a lot coming online. I don't know how they made it work with, you know, with all the increases in costs. Well, if, but if you're one of these builders that are bringing on or developers that are bringing on apartments right now, in some areas, they're overbuilt. And so we're starting to see vacancy factors. There was a time when um, we were close to 100% occupancy. And uh, today we're starting to see vacancies. Yeah, I've I've heard that too, which tells me that maybe rents won't be going up so much over the next few years, uh, at least in well, the gonna you're going to have to give concessions to fill your building up. So whether it's three months or six months free rent, um, you do whatever you have to do to get a tenant in there and paying rent. But um, then that means the apartment down the street, after he loses a bunch, he's going to start giving concessions. So these people are just going to be um, going where the best deal is. So let's talk about what you have been agreeing to then, because I know you look at a lot of projects. You you have experience in all kinds of asset classes. You could choose the one that you think has the highest return. Why are you still in the home building business? Well, I think I think you've been with me long enough, Kathy, to see that in the home building business, um, we don't have a lot of risk of losing anything the way we do it. We don't put a lot of debt on. Um, and it's relative because conservative. Our biggest single gamble is the timing factor. How long will it take? And of course, when you're building homes all the time, you're in good markets and you're in bad markets. And that's intentional because it's just too hard to anticipate when the market's going to be good and then get into it. Um, it takes you know a year and a half to two years to ramp up a project. Um, and it's too hard to figure out when you need to get out because, oh, the market's getting bad. So if you just stay in it through thick and thin, um, you can pretty much navigate the waters. And of course, the deals that we're putting together to help us um, in this endeavor, uh, for example, we'll take um, the Martin Hills Ranch in Danville, California, which is an entitlement deal. Now, that would be a higher risk type of a project. But what we did to kind of mitigate that is, A, we have a purchase and sale agreement that we don't have to close on the land until such time as we get all of the entitlements in place. And uh, we've done our due diligence and we pretty much mit mitigated each and every potential disaster that could take place. So we have a pretty clean package ready to go by the time we bring it to you. And then of course, in Oregon, um, like I say, this is a very innovative and creative deal whereby he this person has 155 finish lots so we don't have the downtime to get you know that year and a half to get through entitlements another six months to build lots and so on and so forth this one is ready to go and we were able to a acquire the lots at what it would really cost us to finish a lot in other words sixty thousand a piece and that's what our finishing costs typically are and b um in a fashion that we don't have to pay for the land until such time as we sell to a third party buyer. In other words, we will go on to their property, we will build our house, and then we will offer it for sale. And when a third party buyer buys it, we close on it. And at that time we pay the seller. So um, this is about as conservative a way as you can get into the building, um, into a building project as possible. And it's a, well, it's a relatively small market up there. They do have great growth going on right now. They have um, 2,000 jobs over the next three to five years in the private sector. 
They have 300 new jobs coming in um, at the Air Force um, base out there. And so I think, and, and we, get, we have 155 homes. We're trying to do about 36 homes a year, 35, 36 homes a year. So um, I think we can handle that. <laughs> now, <clears throat> I know but neither you nor I want to take on risk. I have taken on projects that became risky. They didn't look risky in the beginning, but to your point, um, either either we acquired land and the development of that land was dependent on getting a loan and we couldn't get the loan, or we did get a loan and then we went through something like COVID where those loan payments have to be paid even when you can't work, <laughs> even when you can't come to the job site. Um, you know, and then you can't get the materials uh, once people can come to the job site. So, you know, you never know what life is going to throw at you. And when you have a massive construction loan that has to be paid, it, it can be it can really blow up a project. Um, I I was not sure I wanted to do any more construction pro projects after COVID. But then, you know, I talked I spoke with you and, you know, we've done 14 deals together and they've gone very well over the last 14 years. Uh what um what got you to choose this location because it's it's in Oregon it's in Klamath Falls it's not uh, maybe as familiar to people why why this area well as it turns out um people are moving to these secondary markets and an example would be our project up in Bozeman um people are moving there in leaps and bounds this little town in Oregon um, has people moving there again from California, just like our Montana project has, um, but also has growth and it's in a good area. I mean, it's not far from Medford, not far from the California border, close to Bend, Oregon, which just blew up over the last 10 years. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's a thriving community. And so we think it's the next hot spot. And, uh, with the new businesses that are coming there, I think it, offers a great opportunity for our investors. And they're in need of housing. Didn't someone from the city call you uh, begging you to come up and build some housing? Well, that was that was based on demands they were getting from the Air Force. The Air Force is moving their F-35 project to um, the air base. I can't think of the name of the air base, but um, they already have the F-15 there. Um, it's the top gun base, and the Air Force needs 300 new homes in the area to house officers and training people. Um, so they started this initiative. But along with that, they already had this demand in place, new companies coming to the area um, for 2,000 to plus jobs over the next three to five years. So the overall thing, the overall offer to us, the overall pitch by the city was very enticing. And uh, yeah, we're excited to be there. And of course, this may be the best site we've ever done. I think I've told you that um, it's the average size lot is going to be over a half acre. The it's undulating terrain it's tree laden. It's a wooded area. I think we sent you a video. I don't know um, if you looked at that video or not, but it's it, it the backside of the property overlooks Klamath Lake. So no, it's the uh, it's probably the prettiest project. And um, something new that's happening. Like I say, uh, we we're seeing it in California, in Nevada. We're seeing it in Montana. We're seeing it every place. California buyers are moving out of California, and this is one of the destinations, one of the places they're going. Yeah. And so uh, let's go back to how you were able to structure it. So you you know, you know, knew that Klamath Falls was in need of new housing. Um, the this, this city saw one of your other pro our other projects and uh, reached out. So how did you, again, like you, you, you looked at a lot of different land up there, and chose this particular parcel. Can you just quickly explain what the difference is between, you, you mentioned a finished lot and raw land? Yes. So the project that they, the city had seen videos of um, and information on was our Argos project in, in the Reno, Nevada. Um, that's what prompted them to give us a call. Um, 
that when we got up there, yes, they had about 15 different sites for us to look at. Most of it was raw land. There were two finished projects, this one and another one. Um, some of the lots that they showed us were uh, in, in property that they showed us for development would have required years to get it entitled and then to develop the lots and so on. So they were out of the question because this is an immediate demand. Um, the uh, the other subdivision we saw was more typical of what we do. It was a small lot subdivision, very nice, well done, um, and uh, they were having good results. And then there was this particular property that is semi-rural. It's not downtown. It's about two miles out of town, but still part of the city limits. And like I say, on undulating terrain. So we tried to figure out how we could do it. We didn't want to take down in the $10 million worth of dirt, worth finished lots, and uh, then have to raise another 8 to $10 million to go ahead and build um, homes. So we went back to the fellow and we made him an offer whereby um, we would give, we would take an option on the property and we've done that. Um, and then we would build over his lots and that's our next stage. We want to start pouring foundations in the next 30 to 45 days and build houses. And we will be offering the houses for sale um, starting with we'll start doing pre-sales the day we go in the ground with the foundations. Um, and when we sell a house, like I say, to a third party buyer, that's when we close with the seller. We pay him his sixty thousand dollars. Yeah, it's, it's an incredible negotiation. Uh, <clears throat> and so again, uh, raw land is so important for people to understand this. You can't do anything with raw land. You have to get, you know, approvals to build on it. Then you've got to get permits. But then you've got to bring in roads and utilities. Uh, you know, the sewer, sewer. That all is so difficult and expensive, especially in a rural area where the lot sizes are bigger. Right? That had to be extremely expensive to do. Well, I I told you that our typical finishing cost is sixty thousand dollars, and that's what it is for an eight thousand square foot lot in one of our subdivisions. So our finishing costs range anywhere from. Fifty to sixty thousand dollars, depending on whether it's a small lot or a large lot. A large lot like this, that are over a half acre, would cost anywhere from ninety to one hundred and twenty thousand dollars to finish it. And I say that because they're on undulating terrain and and whatnot. So in this particular case, the roads are in, all the wet utilities, water, sewer is in place, the dry utilities, um, electric, gas, uh, um, uh, fiber optics, everything's in place. We just go on the property, start building our homes. And that that is that that is such a huge win, and that has removed so much risk. The pro the projects that I've been in that have been challenged didn't have those things in yet, you know. And I remember bringing a project to you in Colorado, <clears throat> and one of the first things you looked at was that, like the finishing costs were going to be too 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 much because you had to run too many uh, lines too far away in in nature. <laughs> I know I'm not saying it correctly, well, but no, it's it's true, and I can't remember that exact project. But um, even up in Bozeman, we ran into certain um, kind of unforeseen things. They had us reroute the sewer system. We thought we were going to connect in at the southern part of our property, but then we ended up having to put a lift station in and a longer sewer line. Fortunately, it wasn't anything catastrophic, but we. Um, also been in projects where they want us to run a mile and a half of sewer line, um, reroute other lines, oversize um, lines, bring utilities, uh, dry utilities in like electricity and things like that from miles away. So um, put transformers in place. None of that's the case here. Everything's in place for our $60,000. It's it's brilliant negotiation. So technically, in some ways, you're getting the the land for free, or almost better than free, because, like you said, we're getting them for sixty thousand, but it would cost over over that just to get them finished, not even including the cost of the land. Yeah, it's it's by far the best buy we've ever made. Oh my goodness! All right. Well, if you all would like to find out more about this, we are still accepting investment in this project. It's called Ridgewater. You can go to growdevelopments.com and find out more about that. We're really excited about it. I know. Again, 
both Fred and I don't, <laughs> we're not at a stage in life where we want uh, risk. So this one has been de-risked quite a lot. You can find out more. We've got webinars at growdevelopments.com. You do need to be accredited to invest in that. And it uh, the minimum investment is 50000 and we're the deadline, I, I believe, is mid-March. So um, if you're interested, you'd want to jump on that right away. The preferred return is pretty high, 12.5%. Um, also, if you're not sure what a syndication is or what accredited investor is or how to invest passively like this, I'm actually doing a webinar at Real Wealth um, this coming Thursday. And if you're listening to the recording here, then I'm going to give the date because that would be easier. Um, Thursday, February 29th, I'm doing a webinar at Real Wealth to explain what a syndication is, how it's structured, what kind of fees you can expect. Uh, what kind of returns, what a preferred return is. Basically, that means you get your 12.5% annualized uh, before Fred and I get our profit share. So, um, you know, we want to make sure the investors come first. It's a very high preferred return, but um, that's what we've done over the years. They still um, get 25% of the profits too. Yep, so. and and 25% of the profits after that. So, and what again, what's exciting about this project is we're going to start building right away. I mean, Fred wants to get on the ground right now. Um, and and as soon as those homes are built and sold, the distributions begin. So it's it's pretty quick. And the, well, that, the capital back first. So first profits from the first homes that sell will, uh, you know, will go to pay back the investor that, capital. Then, that's another very unique feature of this, that A, instead of waiting a year and a half for entitlements and six months to finish the lots, so two years before we really start building a house, another six months before we deliver the first house. This one here, we deliver the first house in six months from the time we go into the ground. And every house we make a profit on, and so we start returning capital day one. We don't have to use it for phase two much building or anything. So, no, this is by far the best deal we've ever done. Oh, very exciting. I'm happy to be a part of it. All right. And then just one last thing, the option, and this is record, I, like how do you enforce the option? And what if the landowner says, you know, I, I don't like this deal anymore? Yeah. No, our attorneys have assured us that um, it's locked up. Yes, it's recorded against the property. There's nothing he can do about it other than perform. Perfect. All right, Fred. Well, it's always fun working with you and, and being a partner with you. Thank you all for listening. I hope you learned some fun stuff. And again, if you're interested in finding out more, just go to growdevelopments.com or sign up for the webinar at realwealth.com. If it's already the, the webinar has already been done, you can always find it at realwealth.com under the learn tab where we uh, put our webinars. All right. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Fred. You have a good day. Bye-bye. You too. And thank you for joining me here on The Real Wealth Show. Again, you can go to growdevelopments.com to find out more about our Ridgewater project. And you have just until, I think it closes in March. So there's some time still to get in. Uh, our last project with Fred sold out in one webinar. So I would definitely jump on it if you're interested. We have lots of people at Grow Developments or at Real Wealth who can help you answer your questions or understand syndications. I'm Kathy Vetke. Thanks again for joining me here on The Real Wealth Show. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are provided for informational purposes only and should not be construed as an offer to buy or sell any securities or to make or consider any investment or course of action. For more information, go to realwealthshow.com.